Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's our next example of how to solve a truss problem. Something slightly different. It's still a simple problem. Here we have the truss vertical instead of horizontal. We're still trying to find the force at C and we want to find the force in all three of the members. We also want to know which members are under compression and which members are under tension. Let's go ahead and start with that. First of all, let's see here. We have a force pulling down this way. Let's say that this pin wasn't there then this would simply rotate around and this beam would slide down. This beam here is preventing this beam from coming down in this direction. This beam must therefore be under compression. Let's say now that we did not have this pin right here and we're pulling down on the beam on this pin and this here. This would simply rotate around this way. This pin prevents this beam from coming out in this direction, therefore this beam must be under tension. Finally, this beam right here. If this pin wasn't there and you're pulling on this direction, this would simply slide down in this direction. This beam prevents this beam from going down, so therefore there's a force of tension on here. This beam is under tension. The forces then on this beam acts downward here and acts upward this way. This is under compression. The beam pushes back in this direction, pushes back in this direction. This beam is under tension. It pulls in this direction and it pulls in this direction. Next, what we want to do is find the length of each of the three members. Notice that we already have this member right here, 1.4 meters, but we don't have the other two. The reason why I want to do that, I think we can solve the problem by associating the magnitude of the forces on the members to the length of the members themselves. Using Pythagorean theorem, notice that this here is 0.75, this is 0.4, let's find out what this length is, that's 0.75 squared plus 0.4 squared equals, take the square root of that, we get 0 0.85 meters. We'll do the same for this member here. The distance from there to there is 1 meter, the distance from there is 0 0.75, 0 0.75 squared plus 1, take the square root, 1.25 meters for this member. Now let's take this connection over here. What we're going to do is we're going to draw the forces. We have a force in this direction, 5,600 newtons. And then we have these two forces. Notice this force is in this direction, We'll call that force A to B. And then we have this force, which is in this direction. We'll call that force C to B. Now, it's not the right triangle, but we are able to associate the length of these vectors to the shape of this truss right here. If we let this magnitude of this force right here represented by the length here or associated with this length, We'll have the force here associated with this length and the force here associated with this length. We can indeed solve the problem that way. Let me draw the, um, the triangle made by the truss. So I have a triangle like this, one like this, and there's the third side. This is 1.4 meters. This here is 0 0.85 meters, and this here is 1.25 meters. Therefore, the ratios of the lengths here should be proportional to the ratios of the forces of those, of those three forces associated with member AB and associated with member BC or CB. We can therefore write, and I'm looking for a good color here, let me use black here. So I have 5,600 newtons associated with the length of 1.4 meters must equal to AB associated with the length of 0 0.85 meters, associated with the length BC, or oh, I already wrote CB, let me keep it that way, CB, and associated 1.25 meters, which means that the magnitude of force on AB is equal to 5,600 newtons, divided by 1.4, multiplied times 0 0.85, and the magnitude of force on CB is equal to 5,600 newtons, divided by 1.4 and multiplied times 1.25. Let's see what we get. 
5600 divided by 1.4 and multiply times 0.85 equals 3400 newtons. And for this one, we get 5600 divided by 1.4 and times 1.25, and we get 5000 newtons. Which means AB, uh, from A to B, we got AB, and we have BC, B to C. We still don't have A to C. Well, to do that, we need to know what F sub C is. Let's go ahead and use the, the, the condition that the sum of all the torques about point A, we're going to use this as a pivot point right here, must add up to zero. The two forces acting on, on the truss that cause a torque would be this force, which is a, well, that would create a clockwise torque. That's a negative torque, minus 5,600 newtons, times the distance of from there to there, which is 0 0.75 meters. And the force here would give that a counterclockwise torque that would be plus F sub C times the distance of 1.4 meters. This tells us that F sub C is equal to 5,600 newtons times 0 0.75 and divided by 1.4. So F sub C is equal to 5,600 times 0.75 divided by 1.4 equals exactly 3,000 newtons. Now that we have that, we can try to solve this triangle right here. And we're trying to find the magnitude of this force here. Let's go ahead and draw those vectors. And I'll go ahead and use the right side of the board. So let's take this and move it all the way over here, which means we have a force in this direction. That would be F sub C, which is 3,000 newtons. We have a force in this direction, and that is BC, and BC or CB is in a force of 5,000 newtons. And then we have a force going this way, which is the one we're looking for, and that is, well, that's the unknown force from A to C. And that's what we're looking for. Now again, notice that we can use the proportionality of the triangle. This looks like a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So in other words, we can say that 3,000 newtons squared plus the unknown AC squared must equal 5,000 newtons squared. And we all recognize it as a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So therefore, we can say when you solve this that AC must equal 4,000 newtons. Again, we can use the method of proportionality. We can see the shape of the triangle. It's the right triangle. We can use that concept to solve for AC readily without using the law of sines. We now have all three of the members. We have AC, we have AB, and we have BC, and we have S sub C. Again, as you can see, when you follow that structure and that technique, it is not that difficult to solve a simple truss like this. Now you may say, well, he's done some simple trusses. What about the more complex trusses that have many members all chained up together? Well, that will be coming up on our next several videos.